So we've seen that we can solve the Schrodinger equation. We can write down the uh, wave functions for the hydrogen atom. So there's one thing left that we haven't done for the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom, and that's to talk about the energies. So Schrodinger equation uh, in its full form is written out here for the hydrogen atom. We've got the kinetic energy term in spherical coordinates, and we've got the potential energy term, which is just the Coulomb interaction, the 1 over R Coulomb interaction for the electron interacting with maybe one proton or maybe a proton with uh, uh, a nucleus with more than one proton in it. That kinetic plus potential energy terms uh, must sum to give the energy times the wave function, so that's Schrodinger's equation. And we can write down wave functions, uh, any of an infinite number of wave functions. They might be simple or they might be complex, but we haven't yet talked about what the energies of those wave functions are, and of course those are the important things as we go on and begin to do statistical mechanics. So. As an example, let's just take the simplest wave function and we'll confirm again that it does, in fact, obey the Schrodinger equation. And in the process, we'll learn what the energy of that 1, 0, 0 wave function is. So the n equals 1, l equals 0, m equals 0 wave function. And I've reminded us here that wave function, which just looks like e to the minus um, atomic number times r divided by the Bohr radius. I've reminded us here that that Bohr radius is just this particular collection of constants. So. Uh, to find the energy, we'll plug the wave function into this expression. So we'll plug in psi 1, 0, 0 here, and here, and here, and confirm that this does, in fact, obey the Schrodinger equation. So the fact that we're using an L equals 0, M equals 0 wave function, and there's no angular dependence in the wave function at all, there's R's in the wave function, but no thetas or phi's in the wave function, that means that um, this term and this term, which involve theta and phi derivatives, those are going to completely disappear once I take theta and phi derivatives of the wave function. So that makes it a little bit easier. The r derivative of the wave function, n e to the minus zr over a naught, this pulls down the exponent. So that's the r derivative of the wave function. If I multiply by r squared, I'll just go ahead and throw that in. Uh, there, so that's the r derivative multiplied by r squared. Next thing we need to do is take the r derivative again of that. So the r derivative of r squared is 2r. So the 2 I'll put out front, and the r squared becomes an r an r, not an r squared. And then if I focus on the exponential term, I've got z over a naught with a negative sign and r squared. Derivative of the exponential pulls down another negative z over a naught, so negative becomes positive, and those coefficients get squared. So that's what I have for the r derivative of r squared, r derivative of the wave function. If I then uh, take 1 over r squared, including this term, so I'll just extend this out to include the 1 over r squared, then the r becomes a 1 over r, and the r squared just disappears. So that's what I have for this first term inside the brackets. Expanding out to the full Schrodinger equation now h psi is going to equal this collection of constants, h squared over 8 pi squared mass times, uh, let's see, we've got 2z over a naught, 1 over r, n, and an exponential. That's these terms times this term. The negative signs have canceled one another. I've also got same collection of constants, h squared over 8 pi squared mass times z over a naught squared times n and the exponential. That's the uh, full kinetic energy term. Lastly, I can include the potential energy term, z e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 over r times the wave function. That should equal energy 
of the 100 wave function multiplied by that wave function. Notice also that everywhere I have an n e to the minus zr, that's equal to the wave function. So that we're looking pretty good so far. The things on the left are all things multiplied by a wave function. Things on the right are all things multiplied by a wave function. The derivatives have all been taken. I do have some 1 over r times wave function in the first and the third terms. And I have just some constants times the wave function in the second term and on the right-hand side. So we'd better make sure that the first and the third term cancel each other, which they should. So if that's true, then the, the first and the third terms, when I combine them, will look like 8 squared over 8 pi squared mass, 2z. I've got a 1 over a naught, and this is why I reminded us what the value of a naught is. If I take 1 over a naught, I'll get epsilon naught h squared over or under pi mass e squared. So that's this first term where I've replaced uh, the Bohr radius with the constants that it equals. And then for the third term, so this is all one large fraction. For the third term, I've got minus z e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. Again, uh, each of those terms multiplies a 1 over r and a psi. So if we double check what cancels, uh, 8 squared top and bottom cancels, uh, the mass of the electron top and bottom cancels. We've got a 2 over an 8, which is the same as a 4. We've got a z on top in both terms. We've got an e squared in both terms. We've got a, a pi squared on the bottom, which cancels the pi on top. So the pi in the bottom and the epsilon naught. So each of these terms is exactly the same. One of them minus the other does, in fact, equal 0, as we expected. So what that means is the, is the entire first term cancels the entire third term. All we have left now is that the second term, this collection of constants times the wave function, so minus 8 squared over 8 pi squared mass, z over a naught squared, z over a naught quantity squared, is equal to energy. So those constants times the wave function are equal to energy times the wave function. So the value of the energy is, in fact, this collection of constants, which I suppose I can rewrite as minus z squared h squared over 8 pi squared mass of an electron a naught squared. So that is, in fact, the energy of this 1, 0, 0 wave function. And again, if we're interested in the numerical value, we can plug in constants. The only things we need to know are Planck's constant, pi, the mass of an electron, and the Bohr radius. So all those are constants that we can calculate. We need to know whether we're talking about a hydrogen atom or a helium plus nucleus or a lithium 2 plus, what the atomic number is of this hydrogen-like um, ion. And we can calculate the energy of the wave function. In fact, this collection of constants is uh, common enough that we can define a constant called E sub h, or the Hartree. So this value, 1 Hartree, is equal to the collection of constants that is h squared over not an 8, but a 4 pi squared mass of an electron Bohr radius squared. So when I combine the, the constants in that particular combination, that happens to be a value of about 27.2 in units of electron volts. It's a uh, considerably larger number uh, in uh, other units like kcals per mole. But 27.2 electron volts is defined to be a Hartree, this collection of constants. So when I do that, then this E100, because there's an 8 here instead of a 4, works out to be uh, minus 1 half times z squared times the value of a Hartree. And in fact, we haven't proven it, uh, the energy for anything but this 1, 0, 0 wave function. But in a more general sense, the energy of any NLM wave function, if we were to plug in the wave function that we know how to uh, write down now, plug that into Schrodinger's equation, what happens to be true?
is the energy is still proportional to a Hartree and a half and z squared. But when I do uh, n equals 1 wave function, I get exactly this result. When I do an n equals 2 wave function, I divide it by 4, n squared. Any n wave function, I divide that energy by n squared. So uh, the energy ends up proportional to 1 over n squared. And notice here that the energy doesn't depend on L and M. There, even though I can calculate the energy of a, a 2, 1, 0, or a 2, uh, or a 3, 2, 1, any, any collection of L's and M's that I want, the value of L and M don't affect the, way, uh, the energy of the wave function at all. All I need to know to calculate the energy is the value of N.